A lot of people uh, talk about you, Travis, and like how like because it's very like you know like this, like, you know how extreme can can the vocals get? And a lot, a lot of people, a lot of people say me, me included. It's like uh, Travis was doing this like <laughs> twenty years ago, and like because yeah. I mean when, when I was a kid, Travis, and I would see you here or down down the street, like you were you were a myth. And, like, <laughs> It's crazy. Honestly, it's, it's crazy uh, because he, he having someone tell you that, but like literally, like we would go to Chain Reaction and like everyone's just waiting, like because I, I haven't seen you guys before, and they're like, "Dude, wait, like, wait till you hear the singer. He's like, he's crazy." And like, right. and I remember you walked out with two mics taped and like shit. Like <laughs> you, you, you were already on your own thing. It seems like you're you're always doing your own thing, as opposed to maybe bands right now. What what, what they have is that they already kind of have like this road paved. And mm -hmm. you didn't have a road pave. You kind of, you kind of just seems to me, looking at what you were doing, it just seems like you were just doing what you wanted to do. Like people would, would talk about you as a myth, and now, and you're still doing. You're doing even crazier vocals now. And then there's this whole wave of bands that are doing that. Yeah. But, but like, but I, I just, I just remember what what you have been doing like the past like twenty Thanks. years. I appreciate that. It's crazy. Well, I mean, I. Yeah, I've been touring cyclically for tw uh, since 2002. It's a good word. And that that well, you know, <laughs> w w Cannibal Corpse was was like uh, the w the way they approached business or whatever. I hate to call dither it down to being a business or something because sure. that's not how I'm trying to say this. But um, they kind of set that th that was our model for for how to do this. As far as you know, all right, you you write a record and and uh, record it and release it tour for two, two and a half years, whatever, repeat, you know? Um, and we all did that. You, you guys did the same thing. Uh, yeah. everybody was doing that for a long time. You know, some fell, fell off, said, screw this. And some kept going. We never stopped. That's the thing. Like we just never, we never stopped. A lot of bands, we have been around and watch whole subgenres come and go and come back again and, and dominate. And, you know, it's, it's weird. I, I often think, man, should we have like taken off of, for a few years or something like that. Just like we, we've kind of always just, we've been the, the, the tortoise, uh, you know, the whole time and the hairs just keep running by and falling yeah. off and doing it. And we're just like, doo, 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 you know, doing our own thing. I just, I just always wanted to do my own thing. I didn't want to ever, I didn't want to do, I, I saw no point in, in doing uh, what everybody else was doing. Uh, although I was heavily influenced by, you know, people that sound you're talking about the tongue mm -hmm. oriented you know mouth sounds or whatever yeah um was all that that was inspired by the sound of two vocals at once so deicide layering vocals and glenn Benton layering vocals in the studio or the sound of spe more specifically the sound of jeff walker and bill steer that combination mm -hmm. i get chills just even thinking about yeah. it still like crazy still to this day that was the combo that was the thing that made me go, you know, do all that shit. And then yeah. uh, you can't, I mean, I'm one person and I'm not going to use backing tracks, but this is back well before any, <laughs> well before anybody started using backing tracks even, uh, you know, I was just like, well, I got to come up with a way to, to try to mimic those sounds of two vocals at once. And then I started getting shit in the later 2000s. Why? Of, of just people being like, well, why do you sound so much different live? I'm like, well, that's because I haven't been able to capture the, We'll call them pterodactyl highs. I, people got all those sorts of stupid names for them, but mm -hmm. uh, the pterodactyl highs. That's what everyone called them back then. Yeah. Um, and uh, I was just, well, oh, because I'm doing, when, when I'm in the studio, I'm in an air-conditioned room. I'm able to sit there, and, you know, <laughs> especially with these melodic vocals. Yeah, it's going to sound different live, dude, because I'm doing all those six vocal styles or whatever within a 40-whatever-minute show, hour-plus whatever yeah, show. Yeah, man. It's going to sound different. Especially and, now. Because uh, I'm in a, when I'm laying it down, what you hear in the studio is I'm in an air conditioned room. I have tea and uh, water and whatever at my disposal. I don't have to worry about running around. I'm yeah. just standing there being able to lay it down. So it's a different thing. We were never able to, I, I was just never able to, uh, until Dave Otero came along, I was never able to really effectively capture that sound, um, those vocals without it sounding weird. It always sounded like paper was being ripped. Or something. Mm. I could never get around that. So we tried all these weird combinations. I think when we first entered with Monolith of Inhumanity, it was just like, I need the live, like, let's try to recreate the live scenario as much as possible. I actually mm. had a 
a monitor, like a vocal monitor nice. for, a while, for a while. I think Sick. we ended up getting rid of it, but it was just like, I, I don't know what else to do. I like just trying to get these things laid down. It wasn't even until we didn't really affect, like really correctly lay them down until probably 2012. But I had been doing it since 2000, probably 99, actually. Because I started doing that live when we would do shows up the coast or whatever, or just local shows or whatever. All the parts were, it would be, you know, low and high layering on the record or whatever. Mm -hmm. I would just default into a, you know, kind of thing, sort of. Wow. And then I started realizing you can get these two separate tones using your tongue uh, in a certain way. I always called it air displacement, which, whatever, I don't, I don't know even what that means. Uh, <laughs> you're creating like a pocket of it, yeah. of air or, you know, in such a way that kind of creates this like sympathetic tone. So you're hearing what's, and then with the amplification, you hear what sounds like two vocals at once or whatever. And now Melissa Cross is, you know, there's tutorials and shit out there and whatever, I'm sure, on how to do all this crap. Yeah, but, but you didn't have YouTube. No, no. No, you just had to figure it out. It all has a history. Yeah, it has a history. You, yeah. you, you had to have a, you had to have literally two fucking careers and see, yeah. and, and, see and get it. bored with the first half because <laughs> that's what it was. I was that's why I started doing melodic vocals. Was